Scam Boy Freed, aka Sam Bankman Freed, may have just pulled off one of the biggest frauds in our entire nation's history, the likes of which would make Ken Lay at Enron blush. I cannot even believe that this has happened to so many consumers. I'm not as interested in crypto as some others, but I believe in it. I own some of it, and I think what he did is absolutely disgusting. This entire video is going to talk about Sam Bankman Freed and sort of the rise and fall, his life, legal ramifications, safeguards that should have been in place, celebrities that were investing in him and, and obviously their legal counsel should have known that they could get implicated and we're going to do a second video on some of the celebrities that have gotten embroiled in a new lawsuit. Take a look at the comment section below. I pulled the Pacer bankruptcy filing for FTX. I paid for it. You all deserve to see it, especially if you invested in FTX. Would likely say that it's close to impossible and yet this is exactly what- Oh, Jesus. So unassuming, right? I mean, could you believe this guy just committed one of the biggest frauds in US history? To 30-year-old Sam Bankman Freed, the CEO of FTX, the second largest crypto exchange in the world. He was the golden boy on the cover of Fortune and Forbes magazine. He had a net worth of $26 billion. Super Bowl with NBA star Steph Curry had dinner with Sia, Jeff Bezos, and Leonardo DiCaprio. I think this is one of the most disturbing parts is that all of these celebrities and billionaires and a lot of people that are have a lot of pull in society, at least socially, were really supportive of Sam. So they would kind of like propping him up in a way. And that's just my opinion. I don't need any celebrities suing me for saying that. SoftBank invested in his vision, but behind the facade was something completely different. Sam's empire was actually a bunch of 10 romantically involved crypto kids running a shady operation out of the Bahamas. The fall of FTX triggered the collapse of more than 100 affiliated companies and wiped out countless savings. This story has strange but very real ties to American politics, the war in Ukraine, and Enron. It has the intensity of Theranos, but with a collapse as rapid. Theranos is that one with Elizabeth Holmes. Remember how she said that she had from a prick of the finger and a drop of blood, she could tell you all these things that was complete hogwash and now she's looking at, I think, uh, at least a decade or more behind bars. Sam Bankman Freed, with his moppy hair and unsuspecting look, is at the center of this story. He was born in 1992 in California to an academic and politically connected family. His mother, Barbara, is a lawyer and the co-founder of multiple democratic fundraising organizations. Sam's father, Joseph, was a law professor and would later help his son raise funds for his company. Not a bad start. In 2014, Sam would graduate from MIT and would go on to work at the New York trading firm, Jane Street Capital. There, he realized that he could make untold amounts of money trading cryptocurrency. He discovered a loophole where he could buy Bitcoin cheaper in America and sell it for a higher price in Japan. Some this was the first story that I'd ever heard about Sam Bankman Freed. I don't know where I saw him, but he's not an idiot, obviously. He... Uh, what he was doing is he was buying, at least from what I understand, he's buying crypto here in the U.S. at, say, whatever whatever one Bitcoin was going for. And if he bought a million in Bitcoin here, he could sell it to Japan for a, a serious markup. And he, was, he did that on a volume scale, and I think that's how he started his wealth. I mean, obviously, he's a pretty savvy and smart guy, um, and some of his businesses were successful, it looks like. Sometimes he would shift up to $25 million a day. In 2017, he would use the money from these trades to start his own company, Alameda Research. Alameda Research was made up mostly of Sam's MIT college friends and former work colleagues. This firm would later be a key player in the collapse. Sam supposedly believed in effective altruism, which he described as, quote, trying to figure out what practical things you can do with your life to have as much positive impact as you can on the world. All right, I can he would make an answer. impact on the world all right, but it was by no means positive. Perhaps to appear yeah, more trustworthy, with, as Sam became rich, he would promote scary. himself as the resourceful billionaire, choosing to drive an average Toyota instead of a typical supercar. But in reality, he would own a $30 million mansion in the Bahamas. That was another huge red flag to me. I hear this story about FTX and I'm like, who is this guy? And I see the interview and- The most generous billionaire in the world. And I found him. Hi, my name is Sam. The cheap car and all that. And I'm like, oh, you know, he's a, it's like when you see Jeff Bezos, the old 
picture him driving the beater back in the day. Like, you kind of love it. That's like the American dream, right? Like, this guy's building a brand. He's not going out and buying a bunch of fancy stuff he doesn't need. He's putting it back into his business, right? Like, I, I appreciate that when you see that. But one of the things that startled me, and again, I wasn't, I didn't think, anything was up but I'm like what the heck is he doing in the Bahamas like there are a lot of businesses that incorporate offshore right for tax sheltering and different purposes right makes sense if you're a business owner but he's living in the Bahamas he's got all of his business stuff there something just struck me as a bit odd but I but I don't know why regardless many social media influencers would later buy into Sam's humble brand image and many promoted his company Jeez. While trading at Jane Street, Sam would make a few friends. One of these was Caroline Ellison. She and Sam would begin dating. Back in 2017, Caroline wasn't really sure what to do for a career. Sam suggested working at his new company, Alameda Research. Despite issues behind the scenes, in 2019, Sam would start his next major project, FTX. FTX was a cryptocurrency derivatives exchange. For those not familiar, an exchange is basically a place to store and trade different cryptocurrencies and tokens, for a fee, of course. The firm would also offer discounts to clients who stored their money in a token called FTT. The FTT token was made by FTX, and it was also the token that blew up this entire mess. But we'll get to that shortly. The group of young misfits kept high-level management in the dark about what they were actually doing. One former FTX employee told Forbes the that the group scandal. was, quote, kind of a little click, just a bunch of degenerate kids at the end of the day, nice. end quote. That's what, that's what you want to hear. Good. So what did Alameda Research do? Well, essentially, they were a crypto hedge fund of sorts. They carried out trades, matched buyers and sellers, and would give investors a supposed return. An alleged 2019 promotional document raises some eyebrows. To get people in the door, Alameda promised 15% annualized fixed rate returns with no downside. Is he reading Bernie Madoff's chapter book? Oh my God, Sam, 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 come on. It's too good to be true, Sam. It probably is. If you watch my episode on Luna, you would know that that's an impossibly good offer. As later reported by the Wall Street Journal, the firm would use customer deposits as loans for trading. Alameda Research would later receive $10 billion in FTX customer funds. FTX, of course, was also owned by Sam. Gambling and investing with customer funds without their knowledge is a clear violation in traditional finance. $10 billion in customer funds were transferred to Alameda. Now, both the Wall Street Journal and Reuters are reporting that. Billions of dollars was being used on Alameda, so billions of dollars in FTX mm. customer money yes. is being traded on the Alameda, uh, like through their uh, trading house. And so that's especially concerning. I mean, you can't you can't take customer funds without yeah. the consent. And the what's especially bad about it, Brian, is that it, it's a clear violation of FTX's own uh, guidelines. FTX and the Alameda offices are located in the Bahamas, just steps apart from each other in a co-working compound. What do we know about the use of customer funds from here to over here? Because that is spectacularly illegal. Oh yeah, that doesn't... Yeah, I don't think that anyone realized until this came out that Sam was doing this, but he's essentially doing what that, uh, what that kid from Blank Check did. Remember that movie back in the day? The kid finds some some rich guy's checkbook and he's just like cutting checks, right? Blank check, using money that wasn't his for purposes that didn't benefit. It doesn't happen on Wall Street. That is a clear violation of security. Oh, we're not in Wall Street. We're in the Bahamas. <laughs> we're in the Bahamas. And to make things worse, some of the things that Caroline said in interviews weren't too encouraging. Yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math being... Ugh. She looks like somebody that would blow up the moon with Gru. Uh, elementary school math being... Like, what? This, this company is worth over $30 billion? You're the CEO of Alameda and that's your... FTX and Alameda's position is that this is elementary school math? Are you kidding me? This girl's probably smart enough to work at SpaceX or one of these places. She's obviously brilliant if she went to MIT, but why is she acting so, so cavalier about this? It's unbelievable. A lot of like uh, elementary school math, being comfortable with risk is very important. Um, <laughs> we tend not to have things like stop losses. I think those 
aren't necessarily a great risk management tool. I'm trying to think of it. Yeah, that's bright. So stop loss for those of you that invest and everybody knows this for the most part. And if you don't, no worries. This is a, one of the common things. So when you invest in traditional stock, let's say you buy in at 100 bucks and it goes up and up and up. And let's say it's at 150. You can set a stop loss at 130. So let's say it had a bad couple months. You don't need to babysit your stock. Once it hits 130 or hits your, your stop loss amount, it will sell you know, at or around that number. And it's important because if you're not watching, if you're not babysitting your, your portfolio every day, stop loss is great. And again, this isn't investment advice. This is just my, my own opinion. Um, just as somebody that likes to invest too. It's great because what you can do is prevent yourself from having to babysit your portfolio. A good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money. Um, well, I don't know. I probably don't want to go into specific. Oh, I cannot wait for this to come out at her deposition. We know for a fact that she's going to be sued civilly. We're going to find out what trades she lost her shirt on, hypothetically. I can't wait for her to have to explain the investments that she lost out on. Thanks too much yeah. for that. <laughs>